fifth Sunday of Lent, a Sunday that continues our Lent journey and presents a fresh opportunity to see our Lord in a new light and in new ways and to develop new purposes for our lives. As we gather this morning, we acknowledge this new day that the Lord God has given to us so that we might rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be together in this very room and uh, we need to share the gift of God's loving presence with one another. When we leave here this morning, we also carry a message of hope to our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues for the days and the week to come, to our shut-ins and those unable to attend worship in person. We carry them in our thoughts and prayers. Welcome as we gather for this experience of God's love for us and to discover how we might better work God. Let me encourage you to read your bulletins fully and carefully and take full note of upcoming opportunities and responsibilities in the life of St. Paul's. This morning we gather in your bulletins. There is uh, information about one great hour of sharing if you choose to support that wonderful mission. Also, uh, we're still receiving the search committee questionnaires, and if you've not turned those in yet, please do so. Our church council meets following worship this morning, and the Heritage House Museum breakfast is this morning. It goes until 12.30, so if you'd like some good breakfast after worship, please continue. It's at the Jacksonburg School, uh, where the breakfast is held this morning. We also called your attention to an event this afternoon in Fond du Lac at 1.30 and at 4 o'clock. The seven last words from the cross will be presented by the South Shore Corral, the orchestra, and uh, I will be participating in the 1.30 service this afternoon. But please, if you would be attracted to that wonderful musical presentation, remember 1.30 and 4 o'clock this afternoon at St. Paul's Cathedral. On uh, Wednesday of this week, our final confirmation class will be held in anticipation of next Sunday's rite of confirmation for three of our young people. Our Lent study group, Christianity 101, will also meet in the evening for soup, bread, and wonderful discussion. Our Women's Guild meets on Thursday at 6.30. Friday night at 6 o'clock, confirmation rehearsal here in the sanctuary. And then on March the 28th, the Schmitz cleaning team, 10 o'clock in the morning, to get the work done here at the church. On the 29th, the week from today, the sixth Sunday of Lent, the Palm Passion Sunday, it is also Confirmation Sunday. Please do take note there will be a service here at the church on Monday, Thursday with communion. That will be at 7 o'clock in the evening. And Easter Sunday morning, we gather for a wonderful and joyous celebration of our Lord's resurrection with special music. And don't forget the Women's Guild Breakfast. Nancy. Good morning. Um, there was actually the Women's Guild every year does a free breakfast um, starting around either 8.45 or 9 in the morning until quarter to ten before the service starts. We are looking for people to make some finished quiche, some overnight French toast, fruit platter, chicken platter, um, some orange juice, chocolate milk, and somebody to decorate the tables downstairs. The sign sheet will be in the back of church, so if you could help us out, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do want to also point out an error in the bulletin that it's my fault, my mistake. Uh, when we sing the response, Oh, how he loves you and me, that's not page 90, it is page 27. So if you're following and using the hymnal today, please take note that's page 27, not 90. Are there any additional announcements from the congregation? Yes, Carl. What about the big sale at Leclerc on Saturday? You know what? I have it here. I just jumped over it. I'm very sorry. The big sale? You wanted to buy all the big goods, right? Pardon? You wanted all the big goods for you? That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to have to share a thing. <laughs> Do not forget the big sales. 10 and 4 at Claire Farms this coming Saturday. Yes, Mary. On behalf of the search committee, I'd like to thank everyone who's provided input to us, either by, um, by returning the surveys and or attending. 
Monday in one of our uh, sessions, our discussion <coughs> sessions. Um, we got a lot of good valuable information which has been compiled. Um, as Pastor Gary said, we will still, if you still have a survey, you have to return. Please, you know, do so. Today to begin um, filling out and begin um, working on that profile, so we will keep you posted. Thank you very much. Other announcements? Yes, Tom. I just have to say the uh, the uh, church project committee, the building property committee. Uh, we have our bids in for the parsonage, so we have to at some point get the beginning of here go with you or. Um, from the committee, uh, we talk about a date or anything like that, but to review them and then get ready for the work to be done, they accept to turn it over to the, uh, to the donor and such and let them choose. So, those of us who are part of the property committee, we have to get together and talk and make a few. Thanks, Tom, very much. Anyone else? Then let us turn our hearts, minds, and spirits to the act of worship itself as we hear this morning's prayer. Of 12 hymns, 
And those 12 hymns were based on the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. This is the hymn based on we trust and believe in the one holy Catholic Church and the university, universal... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not just <coughs> absolutely blank. Anyway, the church is one foundation, a great hymn of our faith.
Well, I have my bag here again this morning. What does it say on it? Hey, grateful hearts gather here. Ah, grateful hearts gather here. That's good. And do you remember last week what we had in the bag? Do you remember? Anybody remember what was in the bag last week? Straight. Yeah, I'm straight. But there was something at the end of the string. Remember what it was? A whistle, huh? And guess what else is in the bag this week? Oh, I bet you some of you know what this is. That's a football, isn't it? It's a nice looking football, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, let's see. Unfortunately, uh, there are no Green Bay Packers signatures on here. These are all Buffalo Bills. John, stand up. How much for Yeah, how much for it? Here it comes. Sit down. Okay, the Green Bay Packers signed Aaron Rodgers to a three year deal for $100 million. Okay. Sit down. It's a football, right? And twice now, I've asked John to stand up so I can throw him the football. Twice I've asked him. John, stand up, please. I'm going to throw you the football this time. Sure. sure. Ready? Sit down. <laughs> Sometimes. We make promises to each other that we don't keep. I said, John, stand up, I'll throw you the football. And I didn't throw him the football. I kept it just for me. God doesn't work that way. What do you have? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you. See, this really just makes it even more true when God makes a promise to us. If we really try, we can draw the picture we want. Huh? This is the football. That's the football. How did you know ahead of time? No, it's in the bag. Oh, it's in the bag. You've been paying attention, haven't you? It's in the bag. God's promises to us are always kept. Even though sometimes when we make promises to each other, we don't keep those promises very well. And we all need to try and be more like God and keep our promises to each other. Hang on. John, stand up. Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me. 